In this video I'd like to continue with the theme of non-transferrin bound iron but in this video I'd like to focus on the mechanisms by which non-transferrin bound iron can be generated. If you haven't seen the video introducing NTBI yet I suggest that you first go and watch that one and then move on to this one because this one really follows on the previous one. So we said that non-transferrin bound iron or free iron in the plasma is formed when the iron transporters, uh, also called transferrin, is overwhelmed. There is too much iron around to be carried uh, in the circulation by transferrin. And in the video on transferrin saturation we discussed how this all works, but let's just say that when the transferrin saturation, for whatever reason, goes beyond 60 to 70 percent, you start seeing the development of or the generation of non-transferrin bound iron that would be found free in the plasma. And there's a number of important mechanisms by which this can happen. So let's just look at the, these systematically and see if we can understand how it works because if you understand it you'll remember it and hopefully after this you'll have a much deeper understanding of iron physiology and metabolism in general as well. So the first mechanism would be to just think about iron absorption. So iron absorption takes place in the duodenum but there are situations where this absorption could be increased to a much higher level than normal. So let's just say the iron comes in here much more than would be the norm. And this often happens in conditions such as hereditary hemochromatosis, where there's a genetic defect leading to increased uh, iron absorption. And this can also happen in conditions such as ineffective erythropoiesis and I explain this in much more detail in the video on erythropherone. The second mechanism would be to overwhelm the storage systems. So if we think about iron storage, the reticuloendothelial system which includes macrophages in the liver, the spleen and the bone marrow. This system has a limited storage capacity of about 10 to 15 grams of iron. And once this becomes overwhelmed, the excess iron that was stored in the cells will flow back into the circulation. So let's just say um, iron here in the liver will move back into the circulation. Iron in the spleen, iron in the bone marrow can go back in here. Now this most often happens with long-term iron overload from conditions such as hereditary hemochromatosis but it can happen much quicker if your patient is transfusion dependent so let's just draw a unit of blood here and we'll connect it up to the circulation again and you'll be rem you'll remember that each unit of blood contains 200 to 250 milligrams of iron so after about 50 units of blood you would have completely overwhelmed the storage ability of the body. Now in practice we see that there's already non-transferrin bound iron generation at a much earlier level. So even after sometimes 10 to 20 units of blood transfused you can see that patients start having NTBI. And just to give you some examples so any conditions such as hereditary hemochromatosis or transfusion dependent conditions. These could be things like bone marrow failure syndromes, thalassemia and many many others. The third possible mechanism is that of ineffective erythropoiesis. Now we've mentioned that when we spoke about absorption but what happens here is that when there is something wrong with the, uh, let's say, the development of red blood cells, so 
you remember that during erythropoiesis there's a whole range of steps where erythroid precursors would go through different phases to eventually become red blood cells so, so that's a reticular site and eventually you will have a red blood cell but there are conditions such as thalassemia major for instance uh, myelodysplastic syndromes would be another example and in these conditions because of some genetic abnormalities or defects the red cell precursors do not develop to adulthood if they don't develop to adulthood they are catabolized because they undergo apoptosis and or they are destroyed in the bone marrow which leads to the release of iron so let's say these precursor cells containing iron of course because they've taken up iron already from the circulation they, when they are destroyed they release iron and this iron that is released will move back into the circulation and eventually um, initially it will be carried on the transferrin molecules but when the transferrin molecules are overwhelmed free non-transferrin bound iron will be seen in the circulation so let's say increased release relative to the amount that can be carried and we also said that there are mechanisms by which ineffective erythropoiesis can lead to increased absorption. The last mechanism that I'd like to mention in this video is another interesting one and it's called decreased transferrin utilization. So remember that iron bound to transferrin will be delivered to the cells. Transferrin will bind to transferrin receptors for instance on the red blood cell precursors or to hepatocyte and in that way iron will be offloaded or delivered to those cells. But let's imagine a situation where erythropoiesis has come to a standstill. For instance in some of the bone marrow failure syndromes. But let's just give us an example. There's a congenital condition called diamond black fan anemia where transferrin is not utilized because there is no red cell production or also called erythropoietic activity in the marrow. Now what happens there is quite logical. If the iron is not removed from the circulation but the patient continues to absorb iron, continues to recycle iron from red cells that were broken down here in the macrophages and sometimes added to that of course these patients are also transfusion dependent so they are receiving iron from one to three different sources at least plus they are not utilizing the iron then you can imagine that very quickly your transferrin saturation will become very high and again non-transferrin bound iron will be generated and if that happens the NTBI as we said before the NTBI will lead to the generation of labile plasma iron the labile plasma iron will get into the cells and lead to the formation of reactive oxygen species and these reactive ox oxygen species or free radicals will cause damage to DNA, lipids, membranes, etc. And you will end up with damage to organs such as the heart, the liver, and all the different endocrine organs. And this is the end result of iron overload. So you can understand now that it is important to know the mechanisms by which NTBI can be generated because if we know the mechanisms we can focus on where we want to address the primary cause or we can look at how can we get rid of this NTBI and one way would be to give iron chelation whereby this fraction of NTBI could be bound and removed from the body and we can also do venous sections just remove blood contains a lot of iron. Of course in patients that are transfusion dependent this is not practical because you will worsen their anemia but you can do that in patients 
who are not transfusion dependent such as hereditary hemochromatosis for instance where it is used very successfully.